Today I fucked up by giving a mouse a magic mushroom. The whole saga started in my hometown on a warmer day in late December. With everyone coming home for the holidays, we decided it would be the perfect opportunity to link up and trip on some magic mushrooms. Unfortunately all I was able to find was some psilocybin chocolate bars, multiverse milk chocolates. After a nice trip with the homies, I stored the leftover chocolate in my car's glove box. Fast forward a few days. I'm driving, looking in my rear view mirror and see a brown ball dash across the corner of my eye. Upon realizing that it was in fact inside my car, I start screaming like a some sort of alarm. Oh my god there's a mouse in my car. I pull over as soon as humanly possible and jump out of my car. After timidly checking all the visible areas it could hide, I call up my friend Jack for advice. After a few laughs and teasing me for being scared of a tiny mouse, he recommends using peppermint oil in an effort to deter it. Damn, no immediate solution. So I get some coffee and breakfast then search my car for clues to where he is. Fuck that bastard shit on my masks. There's poop in trunk, turds on my battery. How in the hell did he get in the glove box? Oh my god he ate some of the chocolate. I head back to my parents house laughing my ass off with the thought of a field mouse having an ego death inside Makia. I decide to blast music as loud as I can and drive slowly through a neighborhood in an effort to scare the fucker out. I got what I hoped for, a mouse dashing through my peripherals into the passenger seat. Another round of screaming and I quickly pull over. As I'm slamming doors and ripping through my car, a lady with her dog walks by. I explain my conundrum and she jokingly asks her dog if it wants to catch a mouse. I looked her dead in the eyes and said, if you're willing I would want nothing more than for your dog to search my car. 30 seconds of a wagging tail and muddy footprints on my seat later, no mouse was found. Where is that fucker hiding? I get back and douse a bunch of cotton balls in peppermint oil. Damn my car smells good. A night goes by soaking my car with the scent supposed to deter mice, but new poop still appears in the morning. I spend the whole day trying to make my car as uncomfortable as possible. Plan A is to get the mouse to leave on its own free will. I honk my horn, blast all kinds of music, set portable lights in every dark crevice, bang around my car and leave the trunk and hood open to the elements. My mom suggests poisoning it or kill traps but I can't kill a mouse that has shared my shroom consciousness. Sick of all the bullshit and realizing it's just a mouse, I decide to drive to Canton to see my cousin Nate. As I'm getting close to Nate's house the bastard makes another appearance out of the back seat. He's getting ballsier by the minute. Leaving my cousin's house I get ready to drive to my house in Columbus but it's rainy and dark. Ten minutes into the drive he pops out for a long period of time and even stares me straight in the eyes. I plead with him to leave me alone and decide I can't drive like this any longer. So I decide spend the night in Canton and to my surprise there's no new poop in the morning. A full two-hour drive to Columbus and no mouse in sight. Things are looking up. Unfortunately this piece doesn't last. As the next morning, poop is sitting on the driver's seat. I need a new strategy. Time for plan B, forcibly capturing this mouse and taking it away from my car. I ask my neighbor if they have a bucket and they lend me a large plastic bin, so I put some nuts in it and tape a ramp onto it. I also get a pre-made trap and put it in my trunk as backup. Though when I check out the bin every single nut was gone. It is now a battle of intelligence between me and the mouse I decide to nickname, Brain. Alright a bigger container it is. I head to the local Ace Hardware to grab a bucket and another pre-made trap for good measure. He got out of this one too. I'm basically feeding him at this point. With my last hope I decide to get a huge 5 gallon bucket and craft a makeshift plank drop. There is no way Brain could escape this. But this mouse is no ordinary mouse. This mouse has reached a new level of consciousness, it has seen the light and experienced the oneness of everything. This mouse has taken the human equivalent of an ounce of mushrooms. Brain truly is a super mouse. This fucker cleaned out that huge 5 gallon bucket and even left a me a few turds in the bottom. It was funny before but I'm having it no longer. I brainstormed a bit and decided that oil in the bottom of the bucket is the necessary next step in the evolution of my trap. Hopefully, it would make this super mouse too slippery to climb and too heavy to jump out. With my newly improved trap set, all that was left was to wait. An anxious hour later I open my car to see oil splashing everywhere. I did it. I finally outsmarted this fucking field mouse. I took the oily bastard to Tuttle Park and drove away as fast as I could. 
Here's to starting 2022 completely rodent-free and thanking God I didn't have to resort to Plan C too long did not read. I left some psychedelic chocolates in my car, which attracted a mouse. The mouse eats an unholy amount of the chocolate and decides to start living in my car. After a week of being terrorized, my fifth attempt to catch the bastard works and I set the overly intelligent mouse free. Well you know the old book, you give a mouse some shrooms he'll live in your car for a week. Welp imagine the story he's gonna try and tell his mouse buddies. God drives a Kia my fellow mischief. Your first foo was not reading the manual on giving mice things. It's in the field manual section of the bookstore, library title, if you give a mouse a cookie. I'd have kept it as a pet at that point. That mouse has been with you through some major life experiences xd. But I can't kill a mouse that has shared my shroom consciousness. Made me lol so hard. You are a real one for not just gassing that mf. The Mickey Mouse origin story we didn't know we needed. As a fellow Ohioan, the rodents here give zero shits. They will make eye contact and shit in your kitchen. Glad you caught the little shit. Magic Mouse. Today I fucked up by orgasming in the bathroom at work. Today I fucked up by giving myself an orgasm in the bathroom at work. NSFW, TMI using my throwaway account for this to remain anon. I recently ended my relationship and I have an extremely high sex drive so I've been touching myself like crazy to avoid finding a random person to hook up with. Last night I was edging a ton and ended up getting too frustrated because my skin was irritated. Probably from touching myself so much lately. I have a cream I use for that if needed and it works great so I put it on down there and went to bed. I'm in the bathroom at work and I noticed a ton of the cream was stuck in the folds near my CLT. So I was using a part of toilet paper to try getting that out and I decided to just use my finger and I was being a clean freak about it. At some point I realized I was about to orgasm and I felt like I couldn't stop it so I just let it happen and then I felt like a total monster after. The rest of the day I couldn't look anyone in the eyes and just felt ashamed. I realized maybe it was all the anticlimactic edging that made me so quick to finish. I feel like a freak. TLRI accidentally orgasmed at work. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I flick the bean on company time. You wasted the name pickled nipple on a throwaway? You should be ashamed. Might wanna disable chat for a bit. I'll come off a mountain, I'll come off a rock. But there ain't no way I'll come off the clock. If you're not jerking, you're not working. I've nutted at work so many times. This is no big deal. It's not a big deal in my opinion. Listen just don't look up porn on the work Wi-Fi and you're fine lol it's not like you were rubbing one out at your desk. You were in a, I assume, private area. Today I fucked up by not explaining butt plug darts to the cleaning service people. This was yesterday. We had people come to the house to clean yesterday. Cost a few bucks but my significant other and I had been smashed into grimy recluses by COVID and depression so it was deemed worth it to help us get back to feeling okay. From the service, we had about four people show up, they were sweet and I made myself scarce working in the home office, because I hate watching people clean up my own mess, I am so embarrassed just to sit around while people are working hard from my time in the army. I know, it's silly, I want clean and they want money, fair exchange and all that. Can't help the way it feels though. But this finally brings us to where I fucked up. In our living room, we have several colorful silicone butt plugs under the couches. They have made their way under the couch because we play a game Valve Butt Plug Darts, where we throw them at our glass sliding door, sometimes with score zones written in erasable marker, as a party game. Let me be clear. These have never been in anyone's ass, we aren't animals. Our, up the ass, butt plugs are upstairs in the bedroom. But there's no way the cleaning people could have known that, and I wasn't around nearby to explain. I didn't realize there was anything to explain until they left and I found my windowsill like this. How do you tip high enough for such service? I kind of wish I had seen in time, to explain to them that they were clean and for a game. But it is funny to me, and it's too late to explain now. TL, DR. Today I fucked up by leaving mysterious sex toys around for strangers to pick up. Do you really expect your fellow Reddit miscreants to believe these weren't up your asses? New, from Hasbro. Butt plug darts. Fun for the whole family. Well, those over 18 anyway. This isn't the first time the cleaning crew stumbled upon something like this. Won't be the last either. This is bloody brilliant LMBPO. Next party set up a tournament with teams of two. One person on each team is standing with three butt plugs each. The other is on all fours with their pants down. 
Each side has a bowl of lube, and you take turns dipping the plugs in lube and aiming for the us stink cavern. First one to land moves on to the next round. Like 30 of us played this in a hotel one time about 6-7 years ago. Good times. Send them an email with a video of you playing the game and an apology explanation. It might at least give them a laugh. They even put them according to the color and sizes lol. Today I fucked up by poisoning my boyfriend to prove a point. Obligatory this happened about three days ago at this point for the actual poisoning. Also on mobile so formatting might be weird. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for four years and have been best friends for seven. So we talk about some weird stuff to keep things interesting. So anyway the other day while I was driving him home from work I casually mentioned that he'd be really easy to kill if I wanted to. For the most part one cook and he just eats whatever I put in front of him without thinking about it. So I could just slip some antifreeze in his spaghetti and boom I win. He disagreed and said, I would question why it's sweet and blue. And we laughed and moved on to some other stupid topic. Fast forward to three nights ago I decided to make a batch of cookies. While I was making them I spied some food coloring in the cupboard and figured it'd be a fun little joke to dye some of the cookies slightly blue because of our conversation the other day. Only problem is it was writing icing so I had to use almost half a tube to make four cookies slightly blue. So they tasted a little off and weren't overtly blue, but if you put them next to a normal cookie you could definitely tell something was up. I chuckled at how hilarious I was and baked them praising my prank skills. To be super extra about it even poured my boyfriend a glass of milk, and offered up the poisoned cookies. To make it fair I set one normal cookie and one poisoned cookie next to each other so it's be obvious that one was slightly different. He ate both and didn't say anything. Smugly I revealed my grand scheme. He admitted to realizing one cookie looked weird but he figured something just went weird in the baking process and he didn't want to be rude. He had also been smoking the wacky tobacco so he ignored the weirdness and ate it anyway because well. Cookies are good on the devil's lettuce. He didn't even remember our conversation from the car until I brought it up and we both laughed. I ate of the poisoned cookies in solidarity and it was a fun joke overall. Fast forward to the next morning and I wasn't feeling quite right but I didn't think much of it. Just a little bubbly in the tummy. But I hurt my back and have been on a ton of meds recently so they can cause some GI issues. I asked my boyfriend if he was feeling okay and he said he was absolutely fine so I figured I'd just sort of take it easy for the day since I'm off work anyway for the back stuff. By late afternoon I was holding a trash can between my legs as I sat on the toilet sounding like I was pouring pots of coffee directly into the bowl. I spent a couple of hours in and out of the bathroom firing full power from both ends. It was so bad I thought at one point I might need to go to the hospital because my stomach hurt so bad. My boyfriend said something along the lines of, I hope you're not getting sick. Do you think it's from the poison cookies? He was feeling fine though so I decided to go to bed since the stomach storm had calmed down enough to come out of the bathroom. I woke up a few hours later to my boyfriend vomiting violently. Apparently as soon as I went to bed he started not feeling super great and ended up also stuck in the bathroom for a couple hours. We both spent the next 24 hours pooping, vomiting, and sweating it out of our systems as he cursed me for poisoning him. I managed to drag myself out of the house and get some ginger ale and crackers and were both feeling much better, very dehydrated and tired but no longer in the sweaty grips of death. But now that we're better he won't stop teasing me almost non-stop about poisoning him lol. Too long did not read. I, safely, dyed a couple cookies blue to prove that my boyfriend wouldn't question it if I presented him with poison food. Then both of us came down with an unrelated wicked stomach bug that made it seem like I had actually poisoned him and now he won't stop making fun of me. Edit. A word. Edit too. Couple of things to clarify here. It wasn't food coloring technically it was blue writing icing that was in date and hasn't ever given us issues before. Before y'all got on here telling me I actually did poison him I ate another one of the blue cookies yesterday and feel fine right now so I think they're unrelated. And yes I should clarify the me killing him thing as an old joke? It goes all the way to the South Park, parental murder porn, thing. Trust me I wouldn't murder him if I was unhappy I'd just leave yo law. Actually this is what I get due to too much dye. I for fun wanted to dye boiled potatoes once, they looked awesome but never again. Gif. Emote, free underscore emotes underscore pack, sweat underscore smile. I think this is hilarious. You joke that this is a stomach flu but I would wager it was food poisoning. 
you should check what sweetener was used in the icing. Mega doses of something like erythritol can cause symptoms like that. Glad y'all are feeling better. Safely. Why do you keep putting the word poisoning in inverted commas? You literally did poison your BF, unintentionally or not. So there is no faking it by putting it in inverted commas. Edit. This is called inverted comma. I have been calling it wrong all my life. Blue food coloring makes me violently sick. I'm betting it was probably that, especially since you ate so much of it. Throw the other blue cookies away. It was definitely the cookies.